Hello viewers, me and team here, and welcome back to Let's Play Europa Universalis 4. We are in part 2 and we are off to a decent start with our one province minor nation, Benin. It will not remain that way for long, hopefully. Okay, so when we last left off, we managed to vassal Hassa here, and uh, so we're going to continue with that path. We are actually not in the red any longer, we are just barely making enough monies to support our bloated force limit. And I think I actually know we're over the force limit, so I'm doing better than I thought. Also, if someone was telling me, hey, me and team, they actually would have been religious rebels if you had let that go through. But I don't want that right now, because if you give in to demand, such as switching religion, then you... You lose prestige, and prestige equals army morale if you mouse over this, and army morale equals more effective fighting. So we're not going to do that, and since these guys have to retreat, I'm going to move my troops down there, and basically we are just going to get ready uh, for the next war. Definitely take diplomatic power loss early in the game. If you're trying to get the colonization, you want the admin power to get ideas for And all right, that should be good. Now we are just going to declare war again because we don't have a lot of time to spare. And I like to expand all this. Good times. Go to it. Yeah, um, actually before I do that, let me see if anyone needs a loan. The answer is probably not. Yeah, okay. Songhai doesn't need a loan. So I'm not going to be able to get away with this, because neither of these guys need loans. So in that case, I'm just going to declare war without a CB. Yay! And try not to spend too much admin power, which means I'll blow military power on it. Harsh treatment. Last 10 years, dropped your revolt risk by 10. And now I have some risk of uh, rebellion in this province, and if it goes back to Hassa, it kind of sucks, but it's not a huge deal, because they're my vassal now, so I could just annex them later. It's a little inconvenient, but it's not that big of a deal. Is If I vassal Oyo, or if I annex Oyo, then I'll be large enough to annex the others, and, and Oyo will only be a little bit slower. And so yeah, of course my vassals honor their military contract, and let's see what happens. I want them to attach. Yeah, okay. When you when this goes away, the unit is now attached to me. First army is locked onto this. It's the only way to get them to cross with you. <laughs> or to cross at all, I should say. And then they formed up with me here. Because my supply limit there is pretty large. We'll do that. And you go there. Yeah, and actually, you just go here. I don't want to draw the AI's attention too much to my weaker forces, so... Are they going to move, or... It's a question of whether they move in or not, basically. And okay. They're going, they will get there on November 15th, so this should be fine. They, they're probably not going to try and defend now. Yeah, good. So, we're going to siege race. But since the computer doesn't really like crossing provinces, ooh, that's not good, that's not good, that's not good. Sit tight a minute. You go. Could have sworn I had them both selected. Yeah, the computer doesn't really like um, crossing these neutral provinces, and for good reason, it gives you attrition, so... It's not like it's a great thing to do. And in fact, because you often need no CB, or you can only declare no CB, or canceled loans wars, or things AI doesn't usually do, it's pretty rare that it's willing. Okay, so these guys are not attached. I can move them. They are going to... Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I have nine guys here. That should be fine. Really? They're going to the natives. I hate when the AI does this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. That's... That's questionable. You go into the natives with a six stack and get trashed by the natives. Absolutely. 
These guys, this guy's trapped. That's kind of nice. Oh, but there's two of them there now. Borno's walls are down? Okay, that's here. That's making me nervous. Split this. And go down. Yeah, seven will still wall anything that wants to attack me there. But it'll also let me be less susceptible to this two stack. And then we'll just uh, run you over here. Yeah, now they're going to attack me. Um, and I'll be defending with the same number of forces where you usually win unless they have a good leader. In that case. Oh, well. I have AI help here. Yeah. One troop or seven troops? Thanks, Hasa. You're the greatest. Alright, well, I'm sieging three provinces to their two. That's, um, better than nothing. In relation to the Oyo are better. Okay, this symbol means you're at war, by the way, and if you mouse over it, it tells you who. This is that you're suffering casualties. I'm taking attrition for being in enemy territory and sieging it. And that's your revolt indicator. Free advisors. Truce will expire, but that's with my vassal, who I would not declare on in any rational case normally. Walls are down in a couple of these provinces. Wow, that's an early wall breach. Yeah, you lose far fewer troops, um, trying to rush through a wall breach. But, um, I'm really not in a hurry to lose more f forces unless I have to. Oh, are they going to... I don't think three provinces is enough. Oh, I wonder. See, the problem with that is if I do that, they can converge on these guys who are still sieging. So I think I'll just sit tight. Because if they converge on this stack, I can just bring in help and slaughter them. I'd rather not. I'd rather use their forces against Songhai and Mali, but... Well... Ooh, wait a minute. Can I, like... Yeah... <laughs> the AI is not very good at handling that. To put it obviously. Oh, I have a five stack here. That's fine then. <laughs> you can interrupt their siege timer over and over again because it knows you're moving. So you just like, whoops, nope. Whoops, nope. Whoops. Okay, I'm having fun, but let's see if I can get a vassal now or if I need to do more. <sighs> I hate this. The war has to go on long enough even though you're trashing us. Length of war minus 33. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Siege race? No, don't do that. Oh, I guess I would have to. There we go. And you... Actually don't have much reason to hang around there either. Oh. Yeah, actually. We'll do that. Nope, oh, fighting the natives again. Wait, what? Oh, I um accidentally kept going on them. Well, since they're fighting the natives, now I can safely siege. Really? You're gonna run in my way? Maybe that'll give me a relative strength bonus or something. Come on, don't die to them outright. Okay, good. They uh they just retreated. Oh, good. I get a vassal. And they only have three ducats. <sighs> yep, vassal of Benin. Perfect! <laughs> now, unfortunately, that means troops are going to go into exile again for the AI because they don't have open borders with each other normally, somehow. Although they do when they're actually fighting. I don't understand that, really.
but we are not going to waste much time. We're going to... Well, we're going to check what Song High has, and the answer is not a great deal. Melanese, on the other hand, have 28,000 soldiers. They are 7 over their force limit, which is freaking ridiculous and annoying. But they are a rich uh, nation, that's as simple as that. And the fact that they insta-gibbed... Oh, come on, man. Oh, I guess because they're in exile, they can just move through that. Be really annoyed if my AI dies, like, throw away their numbers completely. <laughs> it's never fun when you're relying on them, that's for sure. Okay, so select this unit, take that path. And I will need to boost my stability by one, and I'm very manpower depleted as well. But okay. I don't want to boost my stability here. In fact, I'm almost a feudal monarchy. Oh, and if I could get to Earthen Swarm before Malanese, although now that I've done harsh treatments, I'm not sure. I do have a small prestige lead on them, and I almost certainly have a military tradition lead on them, because they've only fought the Ashanti. So I'll have better troops, but they have more troops, and by a significant number. They also have a Conquest CV on Songhai. So I'm going to want to consolidate this stuff as much as I possibly can. Hmm. Are they really down to just that? That's fine though. So what we're going to do here, you cannot declare war at negative three stability. But we can boost it. Like so, unfortunately. The lack of religious unity is going to make this a little costly. But, um, getting this, these vassals quickly is important right now. Okay, so form up, please. Form up, okay, you're formed up. What's the supply limit there, eight? And like so, they'll probably attach to my unit that's on them. Oh. They're going to Katsina. Will they get there first is the question. June 4th to June 20th. Not even close. Perfect. Oh. 15th, 20th. I guess I'll just run like that. I'd rather let them siege me. Obviously. Ooh, they have a fair amount. Wait, how many troops are here? <laughs> Just to be on the safe side, I'm actually gonna go there. They might attack me outright. It doesn't look like they're doing that, but they could. July 19th. Okay. So you're an 8 stack, you're an 8 stack. Dandy on August 9th, August 5th. So I'm beating them back um, to that point, but it will involve fighting them. I'm actually just going to recruit a military leader here. Could be worse, and he has good siege. I would prefer Shock 3 or 4, and I only have Shock 2. But yeah, you get better military leaders based on your tradition. It, there, it, it does have a modifier for that. Really? Well, they still gonna go in on Dandy? No. We are going to abuse a trick. Again. And I'm probably gonna wanna slow it down for this. Because now they're gonna go for Dandy. Now they're not. Oh no, now they are. What the heck? Oh, I would love a stability boost right now. Oh. I guess we're fighting them. We have way more numbers, so that should be fine. The only problem here is I might cause them to flee into the natives, and that would suck. Oh, peasant uprising. That's cute. That's not too threatening to Hasa, though. Or to anyone, really. Peasant uprisings are the least threatening uprising. 
and there I will get them on purpose sometimes because uh, well I'll show you <laughs> there's some interesting elements that a peasant uprising can do with your stability if your country gets broken it resets your stability but it also tanks your prestige and legitimacy if you that if you are trying to make diplomatic relations or fight somebody that can be really bad however if you are just trying to get a better government type you have a 50 50 chance of getting are they gonna keep going I'm gonna wind up stack wiping them but I don't wanna run into another split situation so we're just gonna trash them maybe they'll run again oh they drew a desert hill screw you guys cheaters but yeah we're okay Four and five. That's so ridiculous. I wish I got that kind of luck. What? How did I pull a desert hill with 100% desert and no desert hill? Lame. <laughs> if I get that kind of luck against the Mali, I'll forgive this game. Cheap shot artists. But anyway, we have the siege going on. I'm just going to keep the mouse cursor over these guys in case they want to move. And otherwise, I probably don't need that much war score to pick up Songhai as a vassal. They only have three provinces. I don't think they're that rich either. Although now their armies are swelling back. They have 11 regiments? Come on now. Don't tease me, bro. Ah, the anticipation of early game sieges. At least it's fort level one, which uh, as the as you build more forts, the sieges take longer and longer. Okay, I actually successfully sieged the province. I 52% war score. Oh, it's their capital. That's why. That's kind of a nice windfall for me. Herp derp! You have enough war score, but the war has not gone on long enough. The heck with that. I don't want to bait their stack. I'm going to stack up even in taking some attrition. They can resiege this and hopefully I actually win the race since I will have a time advantage on it. Yeah, I'm actually at 14% here already. It'd be really annoying if they won the race. And I think we're good then if I get this. Or if I just stalled out the war. Yeah, they're going to resiege me. And I, these walls are not breached. You need to like roll a 14 or something to breach the walls. It's not even related to having siege. I think it'd be a good change to like have if you have siege there for a little while. Whoops. Then you breach the walls. Hostile sieges, zero percent chance. And they breach the walls. Come on, just complete the siege, please. Fifty-seven percent chance. What's this? I have high war exhaustion. You don't say, I've kind of been warring for a while. Come on, just... okay. There we go, perfect. That's what I more like it. Oh, yes, they have money. They have the money. <laughs> give me the money. I don't care about trade power or anything else. Just give me the fact that you're a vassal and the money. And let's get rid of these peasants because the AI will do better if I do that with them. There we go. So, although we've trashed ourselves a bit, we now at least in theory have the capability of taking on the Malanese, but I have no manpower at all. And, um... Haas is not doing so hot on that either. Mali strangely aren't either, I guess because they recruited all these forces. Now wouldn't be a bad time to strike, except I'm really not in any condition to do fight them myself, unfortunately. Alright, back up to full speed. So I'm going to stall. 
And as soon as I kill these peasants... Um, let's have a look here. Ashanti nationalists... Even with harsh treatment? Oh, because of the war exhaustion. It's so high. You know what? In that case... Just go there. Because sitting your dudes on top of a province does lower the result, the revolt chance of it. So that'll help a little bit. I would prefer not to actually have to fight them, however. The other thing I could do is just give the stupid province back. I know I court it, and I, that's a little bit of a waste of administrative power, but I don't know if I want to take the risk of getting a revolt and having them force their way back anyway. In fact, I think I will do that. It'll slow down my annexation a little bit too, but otherwise it won't have a lot of negative consequences. How much gold is this giving me? <sighs> Basically nothing. Very little. So, in terms of gold, it's not very great. They're just gonna give it back. Can I get money for it? At all? No. You don't have any money. Probably because I fleeced you for it earlier. Okay, and what that does allow me to do, however, is now that the peasant revolt in my capital is not so high, it allows me to flatten my gold reserves a bit. And now we are going to take as much time as the Mali give us, I guess. Or not that much, but we're going to take time. Military Tech 2 is a big no-no. If they get that, I'm in trouble. They do have tanked prestige, and my prestige is pretty good. I just need to recover my troops. Now, this is an expensive setup, um, and it's going to take an eternity to fill out these ranks. So I'm actually going to save a little money and consolidate them, even though it will cost additional money and man manpower to hire more troops, or to build more troops. But, um... I think because of my manpower depletion, it's going to make more sense to run mercenaries. And we get our first technology available. I'm actually going to hold off to see if I can get a neighbor bonus. For every bon every tech the top person in your tech group has ahead of you, you get a quote unquote neighbor bonus. That's equal to uh, 5%. So you can get up to a 25% neighbor bonus if they're sufficiently ahead. It's a little misleading. Like, if someone in a different tech group, like the Western tech group, is bordering you and they're way ahead, you don't get it from that. Kind of weird, because the implication is that, you know, your neighbors give you the bonus, but then uh, that's, that's not how it works for some reason. I have enough money to afford an advisor, and I'm really tempted to hire an administrative advisor here. But the problem with doing that is that I won't have as much money to um, buy military units. And Malinese are very powerful. And on top of that, they are rich. In fact, I can go in the country and show that off. They are banking 207 gold. Which means that in addition to their primary force, they can buy up as mercenaries... Oh, jeez. Probably over a dozen units, potentially. It's This is a really difficult position for me to be in. I need my vassals to recover a little. Now one thing I will do because I have no revolt risk here is on the off chance that the Malinese do declare, I don't want my uh, AI forces throwing themselves away. So I'm going to, miss to sit a unit there to try and get them to form up. And of course the Oyo forces will form up on these guys. In my other playthrough, I actually was able to get Ashanti before the Malanese, although that contributed all of a single soldier, but that's still better than nothing. I could take out loans, too. I could, uh, go right in the debt. What kind of mercenaries are available, in fact? Um, okay, if that view doesn't want to work, we'll use this one. I can buy up to 8 African Spearmen for 14 per, but so can the Mali. 
There's so much war exhaustion. Oh, definitely spare no expenses. We want more diplomatic power. And if you go here, you can see how much you can store. It's your, like, what you need to research attack plus a certain amount. Uh, maybe double. It looks like around, not double, maybe 50% more. Uh, something like that. So, I'm going to wait and see if I can get the neighbor bonus, but if not, oh well. And then we're just going to... Man, my prestige and military traditions go into decay. But if you don't have the manpower, and you're just going to die if you fight them, then, well, <laughs> tough luck. You got to suck it up and try and take your opportunities where they exist. But I'm going to want to go in there with crushing force advantage. And the problem with that is that to do that is going to be extremely difficult. They just have so much money. 16 gold per turn. Or per month or whatever. That's really high. It's more than the rest of the nations here combined. And yeah, the, the, these numbers put together do not eat, equal 28,000. And I need them to equal more than 28,000 somehow. Otherwise, this is going to be one of those dragged out wars. So, store money we shall. We will go into debt if need be. Oh no, I lost the royal marriage, because that totally matters. Don't want to annex them yet. I need their troops. The troops do become yours when you annex them. But the interesting thing about that is that I wouldn't increase my force limit at all by doing that. So I can actually field other troops more inexpensively. And I'm actually going to like let my manpower reserves build my army up now. Yeah, it's actually more easy to field a giant army with vassals owning the same number of territories as if you own them outright yourself, always, given equal buildings and technologies and whatever. And I need every single soldier I can get my hands on. In fact, these guys really need to rebuild. It's kind of annoying that they haven't. What is their situation, anyway? They have the manpower. They have a single unit of cavalry. They probably don't have the cash. They have the cash? What are they doing? Everyone's sitting at stability of one, too. Which is uh, not too bad. It, it's sickening that the Malik can field that kind of force and still have a positive income. Each unit over your force limit costs more than the last unit over your force limit. And it can get ridiculous. It can get to, like, many times more in maintenance. And they're kind of there. They're 28,000 over 19 is not a joke. And the cavalry costs more than infantry on top. Let's see. So... I'll be at 4,000. So we have 4,000, let's say, 5 plus 5,000, so 9,000, 10,000... 13,000, 19,000. Just to equal the Mali, I need more. I don't see how I can do this. I've done it before, though. Huh. I guess one thing I could do is, um... Vassal Songhai and just it, it's going to be such a drag out war if I do it that way though. The Malini like I can annex Songhai and scorch the earth. That way they take massive attrition coming for me. Although I do lose out on some force limit potential that way and it becomes more expensive to field my military. Not to mention that uh, the Malinese will not um, uh, you can't fabricate a claim here anyway because it's Timbuktu is their capital and you cannot fabricate the capital with a multiple province territory. Yeah, they still have a conquest CB on Songhai, so they could declare on them. And 
interesting. Of course, if you break a royal marriage, it hurts your stability. At least 10 admin power or 5 prestige. No, we're losing admin power. I care about that prestige that much. And that'll actually boost my prestige up a little, although it will probably decay at a faster rate. Okay, so I'm at the full 4,000 manpower. And what I'm going to do here now is lower maintenance once again because I don't need full maintenance right now and start using my manpower reserves to buy up some military or do I risk it and hold off on it tough call I like how more of my income is from vassals than everything else combined I do find that amusing I've kinda brought up my inflation by taking money from the computer too well, okay. I am going to uh, meet you guys in the next part when I'm actually going to take on the Mali rather than hemming and hawing over the situation here. So, if they declare on me, or or, or if they, uh, if I'm ready to go to war with them, either way, I will meet you guys back and explain the situation as it comes. Until then, the me and team, signing off.